again and welcome to Apex Esports League. I'm JT. Tonight we have the final round of the Pagnum Imports NASCAR Cup for iRacing and the final round is at Daytona International Speedway. We're heading over into pit lane in a moment but we're just going to cover the session. So tonight's session we have 10 minutes of practice, weather is clear, qualifying is 10 minutes, weather is clear, the race is 40 minutes, the weather is also clear. And then we've got, it as a rolling start, but a little change. So the restart is single file back. And we have introduced the safety car again after some issues of having to cancel it from the first couple of rounds. We did not use it for the last round just to mix, um, try and adjust those errors because it was black flagging and DQing drivers. So hopefully some better outcomes with the safety car tonight. In the standings after the fourth round, we had Adam Marinovich leading the championship by 57 points. Blake Urquhart sitting in with 399, and then Neil McKenzie with 374. Last week, we were at Phoenix Raceway. We had Lachlan Capel qualify in fourth position and then take victory, and then Scott Rankin too, taking the fastest lap bonus points. So we're jumping over onto the track now. The drivers are already heading out for the practice. Bring up some details for our drivers in a moment. So we've got 16 drivers loading in at this point. There's another five minutes worth of the practice and then they'll be heading into qualifying. And it will be very crucial, especially for Blake and Adam with the championship stand because there's 25 points up for grabs for taking pole position. If you're joining us for the stream and you haven't done so yet, be sure to hit that follow button so you can be notified when we do go live for all the iRacing action on Monday nights. And there's also Project Cars 2 on Thursday nights. And we have been even throwing in some extra special events. Just Saturday gone, running the Bathurst GT3 Enduro for Project Cars 2, which was some spectacular racing. And I'm sure we're going to be store for some great racing around Daytona tonight. So, uh, quickest time out there is Nathan Peters. Set of Thompson's second quickest out there. Actually, no, he's, yes, it is. 47,866. Also, fellow clutch kicker Mark Horton, who was absent last week because he was ill. He's back on track tonight. We're wishing him all the best in his recovery now, and then hopefully some good luck out on track tonight. Fair few 47 second times coming in. Alexander Dyson Smith just nailing a 47 328. So that's now the quickest time out there. It's going to be a very strategic just where they're going to place themselves with having the qualifying session. They're going to need to be out there at the right time so they can try and take advantage of the draft. See Alex trying to slip around Mark Horton. Graham Ellis with downshift. Tucking in behind Graham Ellis, sorry, Bradley Morris. That is Graham Ellis tucking in behind Bradley Morris. Philip 
Buckland in car number 17. Blake Urquhart is coming second in the championship. He's got 57 points to try and catch up in this final round. If he can have a very strong finish, well ahead of Adam Marinovic, he could potentially still take the win for the championship. He did get involved in an incident last week that actually cost him several positions. Robbie Bradbury has come through the second quickest time out there. There's one minute left, so it's going to be enough time to get a couple more laps in before they head over into the qualifying. LJ McKenzie just heading out from the pits. Tony Vassell is making his way out of the pits. Championship leader Adam. He's in car number 108. Lachlan Cable having his debut last week and then taking the victory for his debut race with Apex Esports League. So well done to Lachlan. Look forward to seeing how he goes out there tonight. Ooh, a little bit slippery for Stephen Banks as he brings it into the pits. Some drivers mentioning that pit entry, very tricky spot. Let's see if we can actually see. I can't even get to see his car at all. And there we have. Practice is complete. Drivers will load up into qualifying. So we have 10 minutes to have them set a time and score those extra points to go towards that championship standings. And if you join us for the stream, don't be shy, jump into the chat, say hello. There's no here here to cheer on. There's a bunch of sound effects controls underneath the stream that you can run as well. So that way you can cheer and applaud for your favourite drivers. So do have some fun playing those over the stream. We hadn't been working for the last week or so. So that that has all been fixed up now. So do jump in and have some fun with that. Don't forget if you want to get involved in any of our racing you can find out all the information on our Facebook page that's fb.com slash apex esports league there is also our YouTube link the bit.ly slash apex ESL that is case sensitive that'll take us take you to our YouTube page where all our past broadcasts are saved so you can definitely go through and check out all previous racing series there is a lot of racing there to go and watch the drivers out there. Hey Seb, thanks for joining us. Seb's here to cheer on Blake. Looking forward to seeing you back out on track next week in a, in a V8 supercar, Seb. First time's now coming in. Nathan Peters gets first time on the board at 47.9. Philip Buckland just sneaking in with a 47.660. Lachlan Capel stepping through with a pole setting time. Fair bit of traffic out on the track as drivers are coming out of pit exit lane, jump on board for a lap with someone in a moment, we'll jump on board with Scott Rankin who's tucking his knife tight in behind Lachlan Capel. He's 
see just how faint Daytona actually is. You can hear that car absolutely roaring. No, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, almost, almost need to be putting on an American accent. It doesn't quite sound right. Australian accent commentating on NASCAR. Neil J. McKenzie's snuck in a pole position. I may have to try and if we could do more oval racing, I may have to practice the Burgundy's though, Sami. Scott Rankin end up getting into position too. These guys are racing through pit lane. So it's now just under five minutes remaining. and seeing the third quickest time. We had Lachlan Capel and Scott Rankin. They both came back into the pits. He's now got Scott Rankin tucked in behind him again. Lachlan did bring that car in because he was needing to be able to get in behind another car as he was copying the full amount of wind. Scott was happily sitting in there getting some good speed. They're actually qualifying down into 46 seconds. In the practice, we only saw 47 second lap times. And this is four downshift guys. They're working together here. Downshift drivers have actually changed the colours, so they're not all the black and red cars. So there's a couple of green ones out there. It's Bill and Jay McKenzie in the green. That's Adam Marinovich also in the green, I do believe. Yes, kind of 108. So they're definitely working together to try and assist each other with a bit of draft they can get out we'll probably see a little bit of a swap once again they're going to be getting some very nice times when they were tucking in before with four cars that fourth car having the slipstream of three cars ahead he gets his time to lap then slings out Lachlan Capel has taken back the pole position there's three minutes remaining Scott Rankin also coming back in to almost tag teaming with laps out there. Caleb Patterson getting out on the track. That looks like Aaron Thompson coming out of pit lane as well. So it's two and a half minutes to try and improve their qualifying position. traffic going on at pit exit and someone overtaking one of the Century Motorsports cars. Blake also doing the same. 
that's five. So Robbie must be Bradley and Stephen Banks. They're probably going to try and time it and do similar to what we've just seen the downshift guys doing. Work together in trying to help with those lap times for qualifying. Century Motorsports car. So Robbie Bradley and Stephen all coming out. One, two, three. There's a minute 15 left in qualifying. Lachlan Cable still in the pits. You can see the four downshift guys flying along. That must be Mark Horton's car. A bit of blinking going on with the back car. It's car number 17, it's Philip Buckland's car. There's a couple of blinks. Blake Urquhart currently qualifying in seventh position. He's out there on his lonesome at the moment. Close in on someone and start to get a, a bit of an advantage with a slipstream. He's only going to have another lap to do it. Lock and Cable still holds pole position. Century Motorsports KFC team. Robbie Bradbury, Bradley Morris and Stephen Banks working together here. Stephen out in the front. Shotting around. Oh, nearly makes contact, nearly bends it for both of them. Not quite working, they all get a little bit slippery. That's unfortunate for him for the final lap. Would have been on for a good opportunity. That's a big slide. Guys, I'm just concluding their final laps now. So it looks like Lachlan Capel takes pole position. So Lachlan Capel takes pole with Scott Rankin sitting in position two, followed by Neil McKenzie, Mark, Caleb, Graham, Blake, Philip, Robbie, Stephen, Brad, Craig, Tony, Nathan, Adam, Alexander, and Aaron. So the drivers just need to bring those cars back into the pits now, then they'll be ready to grid up and get started which they've just all done so and as the drivers hit that ready button to go over to the grid the start of the race is double file so we had had the restarts under safety conditions set to double file with lap cars to the back but we did change that to single file. We don't have a large field out there where a single file is going to be causing any traffic incidents. So that way hopefully we should see the less any chance of any disqualifications or black flag penalties being given to the drivers whilst they get repositioned under those safety laps. And there has been some updates to iRacing with the safety model as well. So the drivers can pass to their right once they get the green flag. And the leader will have the control, the pace, once the pace car goes in until that green light and then he can restart that pace. And, you know, all the drivers have gridded up. Actually, it looks like Caleb Peterson may not have actually... Made it. I think he may have missed the grid start. Either that or is some lag. We've got 17 cars out there. And Caleb may have 
suffered a disconnect or he could very well be also starting from grid lane if he's hasn't hit that ready button in time but we didn't sit there for too long waiting there's a good couple of minutes the game gives you and it sounds like there's some contact already I just heard a crunch I sure if that is I think there's a bit of rubbing going on between Blake and I think that's Robbie Bradbury's car it's a little bit of a nudge Sorry, Caleb, Caleb Patterson seems to have disconnected. That's unfortunately. Yeah, they all the cars do look good. Sami, good luck to everyone on the final round. It's been a pretty good series. Pace car will be preparing to head off in a moment. Then control of the race will be handed over to Lachlan Cable. Drivers on that inside line will have an opportunity here. The race is now under Lachlan's control. It's green flag. It's got tucked straight back in. It's actually taken a defensive single line. It's still double file going back through the rest of the grid. A very strategic move done by Scott Rankin. to sit in this position for the entirety of the race and then sling out on the last corner that would be a very big advantage to him and they've pulled away from the pack very quickly Mark Horton coming currently coming in third position side by side with Blake Urquhart and Neil McKenzie Blake just gets ahead a little bit Graham Ellis and Robbie Bradbury also too wide Scott Rankin still tucking in behind. He's probably going to use that to his advantage as much as possible. Try and conserve fuel as well. There was a lot of talk in the lobby beforehand about whether the cars will last out on a tank of fuel. Last week we didn't need to see them getting some fuel. And Blake Urquhart starting to come up on that outside line. Mark Horton managing to hold off but Blake stuck on the outside. That's a huge disadvantage when a big line of traffic starts to come. As you have nowhere to go and you are just going to see cars go past one by one. He needs to try and find a slipstream here and sneak in between a couple of cars. He needs to be able to get ahead of car number eight. That's Bradley Morris. So he needs to swing back in and tuck him down on that inside line. He does just get in there doesn't lose too many more positions, otherwise I'm just seeing him start to creep down towards the back of the pack. Lachlan Capel and Scott Rankin now leading by 2.2 seconds. And they've got a very strong lead, so the two are going to be working together now to push themselves out. It's going to end up coming down to pit stops and possibly traffic as they come up. Kenzie holding it very tight to the tail of Mark Horton. On board with Neil McKenzie. You can see him really closing down in onto Mark's car. Oh, he's drifted out slowly. He's going to lose a fair bit of speed here. These two are getting. There is next to no room between them. Almost look like we're going to get three wide coming into the corner. It's quite a good pack here. Downshift guys have basically got Bradley Morris sandwiched in behind Mark Horton. They could use this to work together, however, Bradley's really looking for an opening. We've got someone going into the pits. That's Nathan Peters. Oh, he's already been in a pit. That's it had a spin. Cars 
diving each way, trying to look for an advantage here. Ooh, a little bit of a nudge from Robbie onto Mark's car. Oh, it's put him into a spin. Bump draft not working too well. That's put Mark at a significant disadvantage. Bit of spacing going on with the pack now. Bonkelin and Scott still holding together pretty close. Neil and Adam trying to close in on each other. Stephen Banks managing to be able to pull away. That spin and having really spread out the pack. That could have gone a lot worse. Definitely could have been turned around right in front of him and been a safety car incident for sure. Philip Buckland trying to hold off Craig Taylor and Graham Ellis. Tony Purcell is also sneaking up through that. Alexander Dyson Smith up along the inside. A little bit of rubbing. I've seen Graham Ellis lose some traction and drop down, lose a few positions. He's now moved down into 12th position. Mark Horton. Blake's taken some damage as well from the looks of things. Ended up having an off track. We'll see if we can find what happened for him. I'll rewind that. Safety car for that incident. The yellow flag is out. A little bit of a delayed safety, but I am running race control at the same time, so we can only try and catch what we can. I'll cross back live now. This will end up bringing. The rest of the pack close to Lachlan, Capel and Scott Rankin. That will be beneficial with the amount of damage that the guys took in that incident. Pit lane will end up being closed. So if they're going to head in, make any repairs, I think they've already been in and done so most likely. And there is unlimited fast repairs for the drivers. Hopefully we don't get too many issues with the restart. This is where we'd had problems at the start of this series, which is why we did decide to scrap the safety car. We did see Neil J. McKenzie with a disqualification for passing under yellow flag. Whether he was actually out there doing nothing, there wasn't even a car in pit lane to even consider that. Laps around Daytona. Lachlan Capel's led for those full eight. Drivers looking to get some temp into those tyres, keep them nice and warm. I'm not sure if it's Bradley Morris that just went off track reveals, went for a spin. He was actually moving out of the way. And we're hoping the single file restart will actually allow for drivers to more easily get through. As some did mention that they are getting waved on up, but were blocked when it was too wide. And we've had some very narrow tracks in this series. Our race leaders heading into the pits only see if everyone follows the same. This is where things got a little bit weird. Once we had drivers head into the pits, I'm not sure if they're actually going to swap out tyres or not. Could very well be a good opportunity to put a splash of fuel in there as they are capped at the 47% tanks. In the first couple of rounds, they definitely didn't need to get any fuel and could actually last out 
Lots of drivers heading in. That was what we did notice in the last... Sorry, the first couple of rounds. Only a couple of drivers went into the pits under those conditions. And you do see, usually in this, in the real world, racing once the safety car goes in, just about everyone peels off into the pits and uses that opportunity. As once you do head down into pit lane, and then spend a minute in the pits. That's essentially a couple of laps you've lost straight away just in that time. So Philip Buckland leading in behind the pace car. You should see Lachlan Capel and Scott Rankin be directed to move up. Don't see any white flags come up. Monitoring, make sure we don't get any issues. So the game will reorder all the drivers. It's a few pitting, and now it very well could be that pit lane is closed. That is a penalty situation for pitting, Will's pit lane is closed. Drivers keeping a fair bit of pace behind. Now they can be stung for holding back traffic as well. It's given any issues. And Scott Rankin moving up. And Capel will need to take the lead. Up he comes. Games reordering the drivers. It would be great to see if this has resolved our issues. We have been all trying to learn just what the exact rules are for NASCAR restarts as well. As all our drivers are very much circuit drivers. It's got Rankin out in front at the moment. Pretty sure it will need to be switched around. See both of them go to in and pit. Should be one more lap to green. Four drivers have been in and pit. Yeah, everyone did utilise that opportunity green, to pit. Green, green. Oh, Lachlan Capel actually did pit twice. So he may have had a penalty to serve. So it's, it's got Rankin painting the lead. So it's green. He has control of the race. And it gets out into a good start. What went on with Lachlan Capel to sit back into position two. He was leading the race when the safety car was called. Well, that could have very well been a strategic move for Lachlan to sneak into the pits again. So he can now tuck in and sit behind Scott Rankin. The two did pull away from the rest of the pack pretty quickly in the first laps. However, this time, Neil J. McKenzie and Adam Marinovic are sitting very close behind. Two of the downshift guys can potentially work together here to try and help each other get up and out towards that front end. And it's a very good long line. We also have probably Bravery and Stephen Banks taking slightly different lines. Drivers weaving every which way to try and break that slipstream advantage. Lock and Cable almost looking to go for an outside pass. Has been a black flag. I'll clear those. Thanks for that. So we still.
still did get errors with it. Hopefully that's just cleared the black flags for us. Definitely have some safety car issues still, unfortunately. Hopefully we won't be in need of any more safety car. So definitely some confusion going on. May have been the second hit from Lachlan Cable, even the drivers going in. Well, there's been a fair bit of a gap in between the rest of the field. Blake Urquhart dropped in behind Stephen Banks and he's also got Caleb Peterson right, sorry, Patterson right on his tail. He's looking to get around him here as well. tight on the tail of Scott Rankin's car. Neil J. McKenzie and Anna Marinovich still holding tight. They still can't close that gap in on the front two. Very similar pace between Scott and Lachlan. Last laps was 46.887 and 46.895, so they're holding very tight. There's a good point one between Neil and Adam at this point. Sniper being able to take advantage, that could very well be fuel loads that could be causing it. But they've really tucked in now. Neil flying up in behind Lachlan Cable. He could go for a very good slingshot. He at least wants to be able to take one position here and tuck him behind Scott Rankin. It'll be a very favourable position to sit as we're nearing the halfway point. These guys need to get as many laps ahead before they have to consider heading back into the pits at a later stage. Robbie Bradbury and Stephen Banks both holding tight together. There's a few little packs out there. very well they can both work with each other here they can do a bit of a all right bump draft to try and push the other car a little bit quicker Blake's got Caleb and Craig closing in Mike Horton not too far behind four-way battle for position six no, sorry position seven should I say Blake's car seems to not have as much pace as he's got to try and hold these guys off as he's taking a full amount of wind on his Camry he is slightly catching up to Robbie Bradbury and Stephen Banks just up ahead be an advantage to him if he can get right in that stream start to pick up a little bit of pace behind these guys and then pull himself out in front of them he's gonna have to make a move before Caleb Patterson does the race leader still holding in time 21 and a half minutes remaining Changed lines. Neil and Adam went both for an inside line. 
Scotland Lachlan were holding on the outside. It's potentially going to see them drop down a little. Blake Hercock has just done that. He's caught up to Robbie and Stephen. And slingshot out and around just in time. You may even go back and just see the pass. Very tight slingshots out on the straight. Both himself and Caleb getting a very good run. And then holds them on that outside line. Forcing them to have to yield and tuck back in as they come back around the bend. Keeping Bobby Bradbury out wide and actually merging back in very late. So that was a spectacular pass by Blake Urka. And it's very crucial for Blake in the championship as Adam Marinovic is the championship leader. He's got 57 points. And he's currently running in fourth position as we near the halfway mark for the race. Anything can still happen. And drivers now coming up to some lapped cars. Car that is just up ahead. It should definitely very well hold them down. We've now got Adam and Neil coming up along that inside. They got balked by the upcoming traffic. The two take two different lines coming out. With Neil and Adam being able to then block Scott and Lachlan off. Whether there could be the same exchange again. It's car number eight, I think that's Bradley Morris. Ooh, a little bit slippery, I'm not sure if that's a car that's gone down or a car coming out of the pits. I think that may be Stephen Banks. He's now just rejoining the race. That was Stephen Banks' first pit by the looks of it. Here we go, we've got the cars too wide here. A little bit of slipping going on. A lot of pressure being put down onto. So, it's kind of great. Sorry, I have just missed their name. That is Bradley Morris. Neil and Adam both getting out and around. Neil struggling to tuck back in. Going to give a good slipstream advantage for Scott Rankin. He's flying up onto the tail of Bradley. That's going to allow him to pass Adam. Neil also getting up on that outside line. It was a big mistake. So that's allowed Scott Rankin to take back the lead. Lachlan Capel also back in position too. And look at Blake Urquhart now moving up into P3. Also with Caleb Patterson in tow. Neil and Adam drop down to 7th and 8th. That was some spectacular slipstream by the crew. Now have six of the race leaders all within 0.8 of a second between them. All it's going to take is one wrong move by any of these up the front, and it could spell disaster for all of them. Rankin held up in behind Bradley still. He's going to have to find the perfect opportunity to get a pass. Yeah. Yeah, for all the shots, here we are out, out on the blimp. Just how close these race leaders are. That's Bradley Morris out in the front. He's currently running in 10th position. A little bit of dropping off going down towards the back. That's Mark Horton. Robbie Bradbury tucking in behind him. Scott Rankin will be fine if Brad can still keep up the pace. 
it's going to be a very good position for him here as long as he blocks any attempting pass from Lachlan Cable. Smith McKenzie just coming out of pit lane. He's currently in eighth position. Seems to be a lap ahead of the cars that are getting out there. He hasn't lost any positions. Which may have actually suffered a disconnect. Oh, there's been a spin as they come into the pits. Not sure if that was contact that may have actually been that. We'll just wait and see what was going on. So race leaders head into the pits. Oops, that's the wrong button that I just actually hit. Let's see if I can find, there we go, that's much better. I did hit the wrong button. It's Brad Morris coming onto that pit entry. Stayed out rather wide. Losing some traction, so it's going to be some hefty damage to him. At least he is in pit lane. Scott Rankin still holds that lead. Now yeah, doesn't have anyone just ahead of him. And Adam Runovich has disconnected. Not sure if it may be a retirement. with Adam Marinovich. Like he has retired. This is going to be very beneficial to Blake Urquhart. He's only had 57 points to catch up to Adam Marinovich for the championship win. try and make up for as many points as he can get. Definitely need to try and get the fastest lap of the race. It's an extra 10 points to the championship lead that he can get. And if he can take on Lachlan Capel and Scott Rankin, even take a victory, it's going to be a very strong position. As Adam has now been moved down into 17th position. Make our way through the field. Currently have Nathan Peters running in 16th position. Tony Vasellis in position 15. Then we have Bradley Morris in 14th. Alex Dyson Smith in 13th position. Looks like he's just heading into the pits as well. Aaron Thompson in position 12. Stephen Banks in position 11. Philip Buckland in position 10. Craig Taylor in position 9. That's him just chucking behind Blake Urquhart. He's currently running 9th, sorry, 3rd. That's Craig who is in 9th. It's very close. It's them passing Graham Ellis. Graham Ellis has now dropped down to 9th position. That moves Craig Taylor up into 9th. Sorry, 8th. I'm getting all number dyslexic here. Mackenzie in 7th position, Caleb Peterson, Patterson in 6th position, Robbie Bradbury in 5th, Bradley Morris down below him, Bradley currently running in 14th, Mark Horton up in 4th position, Blake Urquhart in 3rd, Graham Ellis sitting very tight on his tail. They're not racing for position here. He is a lap down on him. Scott Rankin just has Lachlan Capel make a passing move. Looked like Scott dropped off a lot of speed. Have 
been a more favourable position for Lachlan to tuck in behind Scott for a little while longer. So he must have had a lot of pace to not have to slow up and actually take a passing move. Scott looking to tuck back in and sling out again. To maybe actually wanting to fight for position at the moment. I don't want to be taking any unnecessary risks here. Tiniest amount of contact between the two, especially racing close. They do have to take lag into account. The connection difference between the two could very much mean once they are super close, they are already making contact and it will spin one, if not both out. Oh, we're seeing some blinking going up ahead. Lachlan Capel's led for 11 laps. Scott Rankin 2 has led for 20 of those laps. You can see Lachlan take a very good lead at the start. And under the safety car conditions is where we saw Scott then actually get back up to the front. Not sure if hitting in seconds is what caused the issue. Hopefully we did clear any of the black flag issues for the drivers. I think they are now catching up to Aaron Thompson. They don't have as much pressure as we saw earlier. With the downshift guys really closing in and being able to make a pass because they were caught up by some lap traffic. Catch up to Bradley Morris. I think that's Mark Walker again. Blake Urquhart just up ahead. Robbie gets past Blake. Blake really started to drop some speed. They're going free wide as they look to go and pass. Blake is on that outside position. He's going to have to try and squeeze in. They have to block that line. The drivers behind are a lap down. It's only Caleb Patterson that's actually racing him for position. He's on that inside line and getting the slipstream that's going to shoot him straight past. They're going to be neck and neck as they come down. Blake's now in the slipstream of the car up ahead. Get stuck on the outside line again. He's losing speed very quickly. Philip Buckland just in front of him. He's currently in 10th position. Blake's in 6th. Oh, Scott Rankin blinking out pretty heavily at this point. He was completely vanished for a good portion of that straight. there's going to be a passing move between the two. It could be very interesting if there is some contact because of some net code. We now have Robbie Bradbury up in third position. He's got teammate Bradley Morris in tow. Bradley currently running in 14th position. Pace that Robbie's really pushing at the moment. If he can really stay in that toe, get taken around for a couple of laps, he'll be able to see himself unlapped. He's only two laps down. Mark Horton using Craig Taylor to get some extra speed and try and catch up to the rest of the pack. 
less than a second away from Robbie Brabry. So car number six just up, just up ahead of him. It's Ag Alexander Dyson Smith. He's got another car he can now take advantage to slip on up through. A good run along the straight here. And then a slingshot out on that inside line. You see him straight into the show of Robbie Bradbury and Bradley Morris. He's going to be making some huge speed here. He's going to be feeling this car pick up a lot more speed. He's just going to maintain that same line. There's some lap traffic down below. They're a little bit slippery. It's Graham Ellis as he gets around. Rankin saying to fall behind a little from Scott Capel. Mark's pretty safe to get around. Oh, a very quick one. Oh, I think they've dropped down. Robbie may have actually been deciding to head into the pits. That's allowed Mark to pull through. I think Bradley Morris also choosing to head into the pits at the same time. There's two minutes 50 remaining and side by side between Lachlan and Scott. So it's only going to be a few laps to be able to hold off. However, if they're going to be in front, there could be a disadvantage. They very well could use that last corner to slingshot out around and take the win just right at the chequered flag. Scott blinks out again. His car's completely vanished now, only just reappearing. They are sitting super tight. There's Scott Rankin's car. Just under two minutes left. We're seeing 48 second lap times at this stage. So meaning we're going to be seeing two laps before the white flag's out. And they're both heading into the pits now. Oh, they're racing in pit lane. Goes for a pass in the pits, but almost locks it up. They're going to have to be wary not to speed in pit lane, otherwise they will get up a time second penalty. So they must be very low on fuel to have to be pitting in in the last couple of laps. If Blake Urquhart's got enough fuel out there, he's only 23.8 seconds behind them. 
Now he's heading in as well. We did see Robbie Bradbury and Bradley Morris both peel off before. That could very well mean we see them take the lead. Will they catch up in time? I don't think it's enough to be able to catch up to our race leaders. They're going to be back out on track just in time. And as they cross, it'll be white flag shown. Oh no, there goes Robbie Bradbury. No, I think that is not him. Lachlan comes back out in the race lead still. Must just been a quick splash of fuel just to get through these last two laps. That is leaving it very tight. So showing that Lachlan has been out pit six times. There's only a 1.9 second pit stop. It's a 10 second pit stop by the look of it for Scott Rankin. May have held just a little bit. He may have just slightly sped. Two seconds remaining. As they cross the line, it'll be last lap. The white flag is shown. The two are now racing for the finish of the final round. There's an inside line for Scott Rankin. That's going to be a huge disadvantage for Lachlan. They're going to be neck and neck for an almost photo finish. And there's traffic coming up as well. Scott gets well ahead. But is he going to be blocked by the upcoming traffic? Can Lachlan tuck in in the slingshot out around on the final corner? And it's not enough. He crosses the line. Scott. Oh, I think there may have actually been some penalty issues that showing that Lachlan has actually taken the win. Fairview has a crushing over the finish line. I'm pretty sure it's got Rankin to take the win unless he did actually speed in the pits, which could have very well cost him the race there. But we won't know. We may have to shuffle positions around like we did when we had previous errors. I'm hoping that did fix them out. I can't see any issues currently up there. We'll bring up the results screen now to see what the game has actually given. So showing Scott Rankin taking the win. I'm pretty sure Lachlan Capel did actually take it. So that's showing position two for Lachlan. Then Robbie Brody, Blake Urquhart, Mike, Mark Horton, Neil J. McKenzie, Caleb Patterson, Graham Ellis, Greg Taylor, Stephen Banks, Alexander Dyson Smith, Aaron Thompson, Tony Vasellis, Philip Buckland, Bradley Morris, to Nathan Peters, and Adam Runovich having retired out. So, let's see what just very well went on for them. Seeing some nice victory burnouts going on. Having a lot of fun out there. We'll see if the guys will jump into the chat. Cross over to them. jumped over. Doesn't look like anyone's in there. Maybe a little bit confused just as to what's going on. If that is the case, we may not have the chat as we did last time when all drivers were well confused at the finishes. They didn't know what position they're actually in. Yes, so it looks like we haven't got them crossing over. So we will jump over into the results. So that concludes the Pagnan Imports NASCAR Cup. Uh, the results only just coming up. We're having from four dads, so we'll bring them over and see who we've got in here. We've got Erk. Uh, oh, Devil myself. Blake, you there? He's on mute, so I do believe. You have to unmute yourself. I'm here, mate. You there? How'd the race go for you? Uh, it was all right. It was a bit sketchy, a bit bumpy around Daytona, um, especially with no practice. So I reckon I did all right. Yeah, done well. Um, we got Lachlan in 
the server now, so a little bit of a delay in the results coming through. Congratulations, Lachlan. Not sure what went on right at the end. Um, a little bit of a delay. It looked like um, it swapped you and Scott around in position at the end. Yeah, we're just we're just having a bit of fun at the end. Um, class of the field tonight, I guess. Um, the car was great. I spent 50 hours on the setup, you know, trying to get that ride height just perfect. And um, it, it took a bit in filling the steering ratio too. I was thinking about the... Uh, 12 to 1 or 16 to 1 I ended up going 14 to 1 um, just and the gear ratios too so um, the car was just really good uh, the open setup made me allowed to just uh, tweak as much as I could for the car to make it really good and yeah um, it was a fun race had some interesting endings and yeah yeah it was good yes uh, a lot of good swaps between yourself and Scott and then um even sort of getting held up at one point with some lap traffic and then seeing Neil McKenzie and Adam Rinovic end up flying through once he's got caught up behind that car as well and then he's doing the exact same thing and getting him back just only a few laps later. Yeah that was just um plan to save fuel because uh, it was really tight with the fuel here we were thinking about if we could go another lap but we just had to pit because we couldn't save enough and any time that we could sit behind the safety car and just oh, the safety car and the lap cars trying to save fuel and if we let the other guys go the lead so be it we save as much fuel as possible to try and beat them in the end in the fuel game yeah and it definitely worked you did see that last pit stop for you only 1.9 so a real quick splash of fuel just to get through that last lap yeah for sure it was a fun race and then we got scott Scott's in here now as well. Yep. Yeah, congratulations, Scott. Thanks, brother. Um, yeah, no, look, I mean, successful season. There's, there's obviously some learning through there. I mean, this is this is my preferred format, to be perfectly honest with you. I do a lot of oval stuff, so, um, you know, anytime I can teach some, a few of the other guys, there's, there, there's some quirks which have been found throughout the series. Uh, with the rules system, there's some very specific stuff that if you don't know, you can get caught out very easily. So it's good good to sort of push a bit of my knowledge on, and, and Lockie's been sitting there and just, just taking notes from me and just learning and just listening to the way that I'm trying to race manage and those sorts of things, so it's good to have him on board. Yeah, definitely. It's been quite interesting when we're all very much circuit orientated to try and come into a whole different sport. It is very much different in the way it is run, so it's um, been a great series. Oh, look, I mean, you know... What more can you can you ask for, really? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's in terms of racing, like it's a completely different style. You're trying to the way that you drive the cars is that you're trying to lean on the right rear tire when and where you can. But um, and an open setups allow you definitely to do that. Um, fixed setups is 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 quite right front intensive. So it's just learning. There are. Uh, two or three different ways that you can really drive the car to balance out where the wear goes within the tires a few of the guys adapted to it a few of the guys just didn't just sort of trying to turn in and getting understeer and we're a gt3 car or won't really punish you for it or a v8 supercar might flick the rear end a little bit these things it, it punishes you not in a visible way it punishes you in the tire wear and you know it's it's something that i've spent the last 18 months trying to perfect and something that i've only really started to get good at probably in the last two three months so yeah, it definitely paid off. Well done. Thank you. And Robbie, congratulations on podium. Yeah, thanks, mate. It was um, totally unexpected. The three of us pretty much just winged a setup, got in the car, and raced. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's pretty much our theme for tonight. And we were looking pretty good. I think uh, we all, both would have, all three cars would have been up. Just a bit of, yeah, a bit of bad luck. And on the way through, and I was lucky to have Brad help me through the middle part to sort of push me back up through the through the field. But, yeah, one of those ones, yeah, we are looking good. We've been trying to get all three of us up there and just didn't quite, yeah, prevail. Yeah, it was good actually seeing several of the teammates out there actually helping each other to sort of get around for a few laps and slingshot out. It was really good um, teamwork out there. Yeah, you had, to, you had to stay in the tow as soon as you break. Yeah, they just pull away and... Scotty and Lockie showed exactly how it's done. So once they got away, too hard, too hard to get them back. 
possible, but you need you've got to have four cars. That'll work. Well, you can do it with three, but it, it's it's to the point where it's like point one, point two of a second per lap. But once you get four cars together, it's just monstrous compared to yeah, a two, we, two we car had, chain. We had four during the race, and we were gaining two seconds a lap. Well, it's you've got to have all four cars bumping a yeah. bumper, and you've yeah. got to have it's bump drafting in these things. We weren't even bump drafting tonight with with the with the legacy layout. You actually can't bump draft because the cars don't have enough ability and there's actually something you have to do with dragging the brake to actually there, there's an air bubble that forms between two cars um and to break that actual air bubble it takes a lot of effort but once that air bubble's broken the two cars actually go a lot lot faster so it was it was capable if if, if a group of guys could figure that out they definitely could have caught us tonight but it, it requires a lot of bra a lot of practice a lot of inside knowledge a lot of different things so um and a lot of knowledge about how the aero works if if you know how the aero works on these cars and what you need to do you actually can't overtake the leader in these things so it's especially too with a lot of coordination you need to yeah. have all four drivers telling each other exactly what they're doing engine temps getting too hot swap over how close are they lap cars where you need to go trying to break the toes stuff like that it's just all all communication especially when tandeming and speed race just like they did back in um 2013 2014 with the car of the future and nascar well they had back in super speedways it was just tandeming communication it was all about so you just have to nail that and Luckily, we did tonight and took home the one-two. Yeah, well done. All paid off. Congratulations on, on a great drive. And um, looking forward to seeing you all get out there into the Super 2s next week. Yeah. yeah, cheers, JT, for that, for the five rounds of NASCARs. And let's get into the Super 2s now. No worries. The old girl. Could be very close in championship points for the lead, too, with um, Adam retiring out, so dropping down into 17th position. So, Blake, that may be enough with you finishing in fourth to actually probably possibly steal the championship lead at the final round. Yeah, hope so. Hopefully it's good enough. Stay tuned for the results during the week. And there we have... Our podium finishes and also Blake Urquhart. So we had a spectacular race for the final round. And next week we do start the new series that concludes our Pagnum Imports NASCAR Cup. So we're heading back onto the circuit racing with the old 2014 model VF Commodore and FG Falcon. So the iconic Holden versus Ford, Commodore versus Falcon. So it's going to be very fun. And then we're heading into round one with Phillip Island Circuit. Round two, we're giving a street track scene to Long Beach Street Circuit. Then back into Australia for Oran Park Raceway. And then another street circuit with Chicago Street Circuit. And the, the final round at Mount Panorama Circuit. So it's a, going to be a great series seeing the guys battle it out in the V8s. So do hit that follow button if you haven't done so yet. So you can be notified when we go live with our racing events. We will We'll be back on Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time for the final round of the Pagnin Imports Ferrari 488 Challenge on Project Cars 2. So do stay tuned and thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you trackside soon.